Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome, and uh, thank you so much uh, for coming out today. It, it reminds me of Woody Allen's line, a favorite of mine. He said, 90% of life is just showing up. So thank you all for coming. Uh, we're really excited to have you all with us today. This is our second uh, annual drum summit at the Porsche facility. Uh, it's exciting. I took a ride last year. It was like I had a smile from ear to ear. It was fun. Um, and aside from riding on that, uh, on the track out here and exper experimenting with the simulators and all that kind of stuff, uh, there's an agenda today that's just packed with super speakers. My objective is to get out of the way so you can listen to those, those speakers. <clears throat> Before we get started, I'd really like to thank our sponsors uh, who make this possible. Uh, and they are Bing, Quantcask, Mighty Hive, Rhythm One, Cedo, Medial Q, Adaptive, IBM, Conversant, Standard Press, and Varic. So thank you all very much for being our sponsors. <laughs> and then, of course, we'd like to thank our clients uh, who, who uh, brought us here, frankly. Uh, we know they're the people that have enabled us to grow, uh, to shape and revolutionize and expand and become what we are today, which is drum. And, uh, you know, if you're in our business, and I've been in it since 1980, uh, you know, our passion is to, uh, is to do well for you and to make a difference. So thank you all very much for making drum possible. Today's theme is all about marketing to the whole brain. And uh, to keep it simple, what we say at drum is connect the dots. And this is a big deal because we've lived through 40 years of specialization and siloization. Uh, and and it's, MarTech is changing everything. So today, uh, we'd like to look at the industry overall. Uh, we, we focus on a lot of companies that are leading the way in this, in this change. So we have, we have a lot of new players. We have the consultancies who are coming in uh, as MarTech and dis the disruption of it accelerates. Um, and they are adding creative tech and media services. We have the holding companies, of course, which have traditionally been in the space. And they're adjusting with things like uh, WP, with like a publicist who has power of one, WPP has global team blue and so forth. So uh, addressing the needs of connecting the dots is, is uh, happening uh, all around us. And then last, um, we pay attention to the big clients. And frankly, all my career in marketing, I've been a student of Procter & Gamble. Why? Because Mark Pritchard, uh, he has $6 billion to spend. He's the giant on planet Earth. A lot of people criticize Procter because his packaged goods or the creative isn't great or something like that. But they are really, really smart. So in 2017, Procter had 6,500 global agencies. This year, 2,500. Next year, 1,200. What? Yes, because first of all, he doesn't want to count his uh, product managers to have to deal with integrating, s connecting the dots across six terrains, six account groups, six creative teams, six of everything. Uh, and he, he is consolidating to the resources that know how to connect the dots. And uh, I can tell you as a, as a CEO of a public company, trying to put together IT over here, call center there, marketing group here, PR this, this, this. Uh, the siloing is, is something that we all have to address because what the internet has done is flipped over the control and power to the consumer. And the consumer expects things from us. And of course, you know, you, we all uh, follow, follow the news. You know, it's in our face every day. And uh, we've been watching what's been going on with Facebook. And, and this changes everything. It makes the journey that we have towards connecting the dots uh, even more difficult than before. So the heart of the issue isn't just the fragmented customer experiences, which is one reason uh, everybody's trying to put this together. But it's the gap between the customer's expectations 
and the resources that we have, especially in the data zone, uh, to deal with all of this, and uh, this has made it much more difficult. The consumers do expect more from us, from the brands. Uh, th this is a great statistic where, you know, this has grown over 60% in, in Google search, which is looking at stuff for me. And, and people want our world to personalize to them. In fact, you know, what I talk about all the time, that we're not only are we, we in the wave of, of connect the dots, but we're in the early uh, part of, of brand personalization, where the consumer expects the brand to know them and, and to cater to their needs. Um, so thanks to Amazon, um, you know, customers expect complete personalization at every step of their buying journey. And that's hard because going back to the Facebook issues and so on and so forth, uh, getting the resources in place, especially the data and the personal data, is, uh, has now become very hard. Consumers, uh, it's kind of oxymoronic. They don't, they don't understand the gap between their expectations for how we should serve them and the data they would give us in, in order to do that. So here's a graph that shows uh, what they're willing to do. I was chairman of Direct Marketing Association for a year. We had something called the uh, Do Not Mail list. And every big client, you know, IBM and AT&T and everybody uh, joined to, uh, to create this Do Not Mail list. So it was millions and millions and millions of names that were touched and it was fascinating to me. Consumers said, uh, when we did that, 87% uh, said, oh, no, I want mail, but I want it this, 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 in their areas of preference. And only 17% uh, said, don't, don't mail in. Don't, I don't want any mail. And, and we're in that space today. Consumers uh, want to get what they want to get, and they want to be spared what they don't want to get. Um, and to make matters worse, we're taking a step back in, in the uh, level of data that we're able to get. Uh, I had a uh, meeting last week where the, the phrase cookies are dead was injected into the, um, into, into the conversation. And, and that's because of the challenge that uh, you know, Facebook has presented to the world in terms of what we're able to use. So the lawyers on the client side, the lawyers on the big holding company agency side are very averse these days to using data for targeting that the consumer has not signed off on. And so where this is going to lead us is into really being good with first party data. And, and so, uh, you know, everybody in the room is aware of GDPR. And so you put all this together and uh, it causes us to adjust. By the way, my motto in this business for all these years has been champions adjust. And so if we're going to step up to the challenge that we see, um, we're, we're going to have to get into this space. Here you can see from the four A's um, that um, we have a collective responsibility uh, for brand safety. And so opt-in is more important than it's ever been. And, and the whole space is going to move into first party data, but with the consumers expecting us uh, to personalize to them. So that's our challenge. And uh, another uh, connect the dots area is uh, the ability to capture and utilize. It's the first party data, but then we get to this area, which is the terrain of tech platform solutions. Uh, in the space that create this myriad sea of touch points. And so connecting the dots across all these uh, tech platforms and touch points and where the data comes from, it becomes a huge challenge. Um, and so we're focused not only in connecting the dots in the communication spaces in these touch points, but to have the technology that, that brands have to use today be put together. So uh, that's our challenge, Silo siloing in the communication spaces, siloing in the tech spaces, and we have to bring it together because the consumers expect a good brand experience, 
and they expect personalization. And we're at the early days of that. That's where we have to go. So every day in the company, uh, it's, it's a conversation of ours. Uh, that's why we've restructured. We've brought all our teams together. Uh, and and um, we're into this zone of creating the disciplines of connecting the dots. What does this touch point have to do with that touch point? Um, and of course, we have to add uh, the data, the tech, and the strategic staff to make all this work. Uh, it's, it's why we're not only expanding research, we have a great tool called Launchpad and we're making that more usable. Um, we're developing new tech tools. We have a, a tool called Crescendo, which is our reporting tool, because seeing and reacting to the consumer is, is vitally important. Um, it's, it's, you know, entered with technology into the micro moment stages, but uh, we have to have all this data so that we can turn on a dime to adjust to what the consumer wants these days. We have another tool called Sequence, and that's our media buying and execution tool. IBM Watson at the base, because all this uh, uh, artificial intelligence is, is coming. We get, you know, we have the IoT, and we're going to have AI. I, I can't resist doing this. Um, uh, part of brand personalization is robotics, and I've always been out in the cutting edge of that. So I was one of the first person in, in people in the United States to purchase an Echo, which is Amazon's device, and of course Alexa. They call them automated assistants, but you know, it's a robot. And I made a horrible mistake. I put, I put Alexa in the kitchen. And for, the, for those of you that know me, my wife is a fantastic cook. And Alexa is sitting there on the counter, and she says, oh, I misplaced the recipe. Where's my recipe? And I said, Alexa, what's the recipe for this? And <laughs> Alexa starts citing this recipe. And my wife turns to me, she says, all right, I don't need two bitches in the kitchen. <laughs> she's, 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 she's out of here. And uh, so it probably, it probably wouldn't shock you that uh, uh, Alexa sits on my desk. And I say, Alexa, what's on my calendar today or whatever? Alexa, what's the weather? But uh, that's where we're going in the age of brand personalization. So for now, now, just let me say one more time, welcome to all of you. I'm so glad you came. Uh, thanks for your support and uh, the commitment you've had to the company over all these years. Um, without you, we wouldn't be here. And I'm just going to repeat that if you're in our business, our passion is to make a difference for your business. By the way, with that, what I'd like to do is I'd like to get a hand for Mr. Dave Brandoff, our, our Chief Strategic Officer, Chief Strategy Officer, and his team who put today together. So 